How's it going everybody? It's Adam here at Cleveland Power and Performance and this week we're going to be dropping this Hellcat out of this 1969 Charger and doing some work to the firewall, vintage air, and some pedals. So let's check it out. So the first thing you're going to see us do is take out all the components that are in our way, drop this motor, transmission, and front suspension out from the bottom. This car makes it really easy because it has a tubular front K-member that holds our suspension, holds the motor, and that all unbolts from the bottom side of the car. So instead of having to disconnect a bunch of things up top and use a cherry picker to pull it out the hood, we can just drop everything out the bottom using a lift. So let's go ahead and get this motor out and let's see what we got to do to the inside of this car. So we got the motor, trans, front suspension out of the car. So let's take a look in the engine bay and see what we got to accomplish. So here you can see from putting in our modern tunnel, we still have a rough edge. We couldn't really finish that before because the motor is in the way. So now we have full access to this. We want to get rid of where the steering column came through and add a custom piece. So we're going to fill in all of this, get rid of all these weld nuts, fill in this hole, fill in this hole, and any other holes you see here we're going to fill. So over here on this side, there has been some smoothing done by a previous person. So we want to make sure that the work is up to our quality. So we're going to get rid of some of this paint and body work. And we're going to maybe get rid of some of this the shape that's not needed. So let's go ahead and start finishing our edge. Start removing some of this paint. And let's see what's under this. And we can start getting ready to fill some holes. So let's go ahead and get to sanding. So now that we're down to bare metal, you can see that it's structurally there. There's no rust. There's no rust holes. Uh, but some of the issues here is this is a high-end kind of car, show car, driver, whatever this customer wants it to be. There's a lot of ripples. You can see how much bondo that they had over all this stuff. So we're currently working with the customer and to see how much he wants to do. We have a couple options. We can cut this whole section out and put in a new flat piece that's going to make this a lot smoother and flow a lot better in this engine bay. Or we can do small areas and fix the, the major issues and leave some of the imperfections there in the final product. But over here, I'm currently making templates for this that we're going to make out of sheet metal, weld it in, and we'll be able to make a lower steering column mount once we determine what steering column we're going to run. Because this car could possibly be getting a custom dash. So let's go ahead and get some more work done on here, get these patched in, and hopefully get an answer on what we're going to do on the other side. All right, so I've gone ahead and filled in the driver's side openings. I've TIG welded in a patch panel here and here to fill in where the steering shaft came through so we can come up with a neater pass-through for the steering shaft, something that's going to look, look a lot better. We've also filled in this, which is, I believe, a fuse block where the wiring came through the firewall. So we don't need that anymore since we're going to be running a dominator for the Hellcat and all aftermarket wiring. So we want to hide that. I've gone ahead and left this open because we need that. That's for the brake master cylinder and booster where it connects to the brake pedal. So we need to keep that there. This will be filled in when the booster and the master get bolted back in place. We've talked with the customer and came up with a determination on what we're going to do on this side. So you can see I'm going to cut on the outer part of this tape line, remove this piece, and make a smooth piece to weld in place. That's going to get rid of all these ripples, uh, beads, this weird bulb, and just fix a lot of the waves and issues with this. You might be asking, well, if you're going to do that, why did you go and sand all this down? Well, before it was all body work, so it was all smooth. We didn't know if somebody had already been in here and fixed all this or if it was just body worked over. So we had to sand this down to see the actual condition of the panel before we made a determination on what we were going to do with this. So we're going to be using 18 gauge steel to fill this. 
which is a little bit thicker than what the actual sheet metal is here. But the big advantage to that is it's going to help it stay flat. This thin 20 gauge is a little tougher to weld, so it's going to want to warp and move on us. So we're going to bump it up a little bit in thickness to help get this to have a cleaner finished look. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this thing cut out, get a patch panel made, and start to tack it in. So let's go ahead and get to work. So, as you can see, we got a smooth firewall. So how we got here was we cut all this out, as you saw. We made a filler piece out of 18 gauge steel. And I made it a little bit big on my template. That way, uh, when I brought it in here, you watched me start to fit and grind away the edges until I got a really tight fit the entire way around this. So then, after I got it fitting really nicely, I started to tack it in place working my way around, making sure everything was staying straight, flat, and that all my edges were meeting up very nicely. Once I got it all tacked in place, I ground those tacks down, did a little hammer and dolly all the way around just to get everything to come into a line. And then I TIG welded it completely the whole way around. I also had to do some metal shrinking. So I had to shrink this area in here because the metal bulged up after welding. Yeah, that's pretty common. Welding causes a lot of heat and it causes metal to move around and actually shrink up. So what I had to do was use a stud gun and actually create some heat here where there was no heat from the welding and shrink this up. So as you can see, we've got this pretty flat, which is just going to help out our body guys. So they're not going to have to put as much effort into this when they go to body work and paint this to make this engine bay look awesome. What's coming up next is our vintage air kit. We're going to do it a little bit different from what vintage air does for mounting. That we can keep this firewall looking smooth. Alright, so we have our vintage air box out of the box and in the car. So we just have uh, sheet metal screwed up into where the vintage air kit says to mount it. So this would be how the vintage air kit wood mount would be two sheet metal screws up here and in the back I know it's hard for you to see there would be two existing holes in the firewall that would screw from the engine bay side into the car to this back mounting plate we don't want that because we smoothed the firewall so we're going to be building some brackets with studs that are going to be welded to this new panel we just saw getting welded in and that way this vintage air box is going to mount strictly from the inside and nothing's going to show except for what's under the dash. So let's go ahead and start working on getting this thing mounted. All right, so we've gone ahead and finished mounting this vintage air box. You can see the three eighth inch plates, two back here with quarter inch studs and one up here. They're going to take care of mounting this vintage air box. So this is about going to wrap it up on this vintage air for right now. Once we get our custom dash start to be built, we can start running our hoses to all of our interior vents. And once this car hits mechanical, then we can start running our AC and heater lines to the motor and to the cooling pack up front. So let's go ahead and take one more look under the hood and let's uh, see the finished product. So this 1969 Charger is going to be one smooth and cool car. Thanks to this smooth firewall and vintage air kit underneath the dash. So that about wraps up this project. So come back, check out what we got coming up next here at Cleveland Power and Performance.